Hello everyone, this is Denise with Something Beautiful Handcrafts, and here we are for part two of Angorathon. Hopefully by now everyone's chosen uh, what it is they're going to spin, and I'm just going to talk really briefly about drum carding Angora. In this case, I am using a blend, and if you saw last week's video, then you know why I'm using a blend. If not, uh, it's just because I want to conserve Angora. And uh, this is a Blue Face Lester blend. So here's my Blue Face Lester. And if you are blending, it's kind of like a common wisdom to lay down the wool first on the drum carter as to protect the Angora. Uh, if you're not blending, then it's, of course, very possible to drum cart Angora by itself. You just need to take a little more time in order to avoid naps. Now, this right here is a Brother drum carter. And the drum is 120 and the liquor is 90. So it's not too bad. I'm going to slide it just a little bit so I can turn it. So I have split up my wool. And I'm going to card about half ounce of wool with a half ounce of Angora and get a one ounce back. And that's basically as much as I really want to put on this carter at one time. I might have to make some adjustments. This carter has been in storage for a very long time. And so I had to address the, jump, the drum. Okay, that's going on really nicely. Well, if you're not familiar with the process of drum carding, you do want to make sure that you pull the fiber out and it's supposed to be thin enough um, on the feet and that you could read a newspaper through it. This is not quite as thin, but this particular roving um, is not very compact. Okay, so that went on nice and smooth. So I've, I've got my layer of protective wool. And I'm just going to layer it out. My Angora, well, the Angoras are groomed for the most part before I do any type of collection. Uh, so I'm not terribly worried about uh, skirting anything or any kind of you know disturbances really in the wool and this has been stored for years so I do need to check it out really quickly and this looks like a plucking that I did in between so it's not as pristine as some of my other Angoras but for the most part candle all of that stuff up front as I'm taking it off of the rabbit. Okay. I'm thinking, me personally, I think I would like to have this drum just a little closer. Because I'm watching the way it's going on. And I don't really like it. So I'm going to adjust it. Now, if I was using pure Angora, um, I would paint the drum. And what that means is I would lay it on the drum as it passes so that it has no contact with the liquor at all i'm not terribly worried about that what i am worried about is that obviously to me it looks like the liquor is not close enough because it's not really processing it so let me find what i did with the screwdriver and i'm just gonna move this a little closer That was like a tiny bit. And to be honest, this is just something you have to do. No, no drum carter is going to be fix it and forget it. You're going to have to do this periodically. Okay, I like that much better. 
Okay, good. So here we go again. Another piece. Take it easy. Don't be overly ambitious. And it's not a race, or this thing will eat your angora, and you'll wind up with a lot of neps. That is something you really do not want. And I have to continuously tell myself that because I will start racing. <laughs> oh, it's just a thing. You should see how fast I treadle when I spin. I just like it fast. So I have to constantly tell myself to slow it down and not try to jam things together inside this. Okay, make it like a web. And try not to hold this down too much either because it will also cause the fibers to snap the tension between the liquor and you holding it down. So guide it a little, but don't really hold it. And there are some people who um, won't take anything off of the liquor. That's all becomes waste, but no, not in my case. Uh, if I had like a really crappy fleece that I was carting, then maybe I would dispense with what's on the liquor. But that's usually not the problem. Generally, for me, I'm being overly ambitious and I put more on than I need it to. And so that's why it's on the liquor. Or I'll have a difference like you have this staple length and that staple length and this shorter bit will wind up on the liquor and for me it is spinnable I for the most part I like my fibers long but that's about two and a half inches and it's spinnable so it can go it can go and I'll take it off the liquor and send it through here we go got a few rough spots here like I said this has been in the package forever and this is one looks like this is one of the bunnies where i have look like i hand plucked this one and hand plucked and just stuffed it in the bag i'm not particularly obsessive about laying fibers all neat and things like that even when i'm clipping them i just stuff them in the bag they'll be all right i might have to tease it by hand but we're okay so I'm going to go ahead and get the stuff off of the liquor and about two seconds ago, I had an all and in true me fashion. Oh, there it is. It's like, I can't find it. Okay. Here we go. I have a large all that usually sits on the machine, but since it's been in storage, um, it's somewhere in my sewing kit. And then Normally, I just use a knitting needle because it'll go all the way across. Then I have this little tiny thing, and I'm going to use that. And I'm actually just going to paint my drum with these for now. There's not a lot on the liquor. really fluffy so it looks like a lot but there's not a lot there now uh, because this this nice BFL is already in roving form I'm I'm generally only gonna give it one pass 
some people like to get things like super well blended or if the fiber is a little coarser you might want one or two passes but I'm only going to give this one pass that's all I think it really needs especially since I feel like I prepped it well enough Oh, it looks pretty good. Uh, because this is locally milled, um, it's not carbonized like a lot of commercial roving is. And the carbonization is what gets rid of the VM. And so it's possible to still have some, well, still possible even with commercial roving to have some VM in it. It's very possible to have it in here. And this has not been like really hard scoured or like really hard um, combed or carded in this case. So occasionally I'm going to glue a little net. I'm going to get a little VM in it, but that is all right. Just pick it out. Just in case you didn't know for my newbies out there, the drum carter is not magic. Uh, if you have a fiber that has lots of VM, which is vegetable matter in it, when you send it through the drum carter, the drum carter does not get rid of VM. That's not its purpose. You could pick a fiber, use a picker, and that is the purpose uh, for the picker to get rid of VM, but it's not the purpose of the drum carter. If you send it through here, basically what the drum carter is going to do is break up all the VM into little pieces and distribute it throughout your entire uh, bat. You don't want that. So it's really important to get all of the VM out before you send it through the drum code. Now, it's very possible too that if you do have some light VM that it's going to fall out while you spin. But if I was you, I wouldn't count on that. Because sometimes that stuff just gets spun into the yarn and you'll have this yarn that's prickly from VM or that's constantly shedding little bits of VM. So just get rid of it prior to drum carting. That's one of those uh, best practice tips. Like people will tell you that there is no right or wrong way. Um, and that's true, there's not, but there's definitely some very wrong ways. And carting with VM and then trying to spin it out is definitely on the list of wrong ways. Save yourself a little trouble. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Typically, I like a worsted spun yarn, and so lots of times I'm going for a worsted prep. But of course, the carding it is not a worsted prep, but I will do my best generally by, look how short that is, generally by aligning the fibers before I send them into the carter. Huh. That is from a totally different rabbit. Oh, which that happens sometimes. That whole spot was just a little shorter than the normal. So I'm just going to paint the quarter with it. You know, before I do that, let me send in some more of this. I 
I also, I spread it out, but I try to keep it off the sides of the quarter because it's just going to get into the rollers and the wheel and the gears. So stick it in the middle, let the drum quarter distribute it. Don't feel like you have to get the full width of the drum. It's not really necessary. Okay, this is the point at which I would start packing it down. So let me get this off the liquor. This is really skinny, so I'm not doing any damage to the teeth. This stuff is sticky. Okay, now I can tell that my drum has reached its maximum because I'm picking up what I'm putting down. So what I like to do, I'm trying not to hit the camera too many times. Normally I would have a brush. There is a specific brush to run against the drum quarter in order to pack it down. But I haven't seen it since the move. So normally I would take a knitting needle. I'm not going to use that one because that one is sharp at the end. Normally I take a knitting needle and I've got knitting on the knitting needles in the room. So we're just going to do that. And I would just very carefully press it down. So I'm just, I'm just pressing it down very carefully. And maybe at some point in the future, I'll find my drum brush or probably get a new one. Um, you can use a wallpaper brush that you get from like the Home Depot or something like that. Just a nice stiff brush to pack it down into the drum. Okay, that's good. Let's see if I can pack some more onto this. There we go. Got that VM. I want that out. There we go. As you can see, this is a process. Okay, that turned out real nice. Let me get that spot right there. Kind of want that. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to do one more pass of Angora and one more pass of wool. Then I think that'll be enough for today.
Ooh. That is like really, really, really sticky. I probably could have used a bit more lotion on my hands. Some people are fond of dryer sheets. Dryer sheets and anything scented make me itch. So I don't use dryer sheets. Well, that is too much. There we go. It's better. You can see that how short these pieces are. That was a short piece. Well, I see it now. I didn't see it before. Look at that. And you can see how much is sticking to the liquor. So this thing is, has about had enough. I'm going to force it down in there, though, so. Very gently forcing, though. Not, like, really hard forcing. Wool is going to help me pick up Angora. Yep, it's basically, it's had enough. Okay, so, the drum cutters told me it's had enough, and that's going to be it. Go ahead and get this off. Pack that just a little. It would definitely pack more if I had the brush. I'm going to drop that one. Okay, so you should be able to see that as I'm packing it in, it's cleaning off liquor. Just got to get it more of it in there. That all packed in. This is spot right here. Okay, and I think I better call it quits. It's definitely had enough. Okay, so I'm gonna put this on with the next pass. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. Because it has said no to me. And I just run it along the seam here. You can pull this off um, with a Diz. And turn it into roving. Uh, that's kind of too much work for me. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just going to roll it. Let me turn it just a little. And I'm going to kind of pull it a little as I roll it. I'm not going to be obsessive, too obsessive about it coming off. Because I'm just going to continue 
drum cording, so I don't need any. You know, I don't need to get it all off. Not really. Well, I do want that off, though. I could send this through a second time. I'm not terribly worried about it. If I was blending for a color or blending for something specific, I would. I'm going to take that off because that's that extra stuff and it didn't actually crank all the way in. So that can go in with the other pass. But for the most part, that is blended enough. It's blended enough for me. Okay, basically that's it. Uh, if for some reason you want to see hand carding or hackling, uh, just let me know and I will hand card or hackle the next couple passes so you can just get a feel for those um, type of tools. Really, there won't be any combing with this. Uh, I don't have a fine enough comb for that and they aren't really long enough or coarse enough fibers for me to bother with combing. No, not particularly. And since I've already started carding, the combing would give me a totally different texture for spinning than the carding would. So, but if you want to talk about combing, we could probably schedule something else to get into that. But I'm almost certain I have a video uh, on my YouTube channel that's specifically about carding and combing and drum carding and probably one about hackling. Okay, everybody. Take care. Have a great day.